Hello everyone, this is Muskan Singh. Currently, I'm working at Lexus & Company as a legal intern. Today, I'm going to talk about the topic, animal rights. Since 1960, India has passed a lot of reforms for protection of animal rights, but still right from the ancient era to current scenario, increasing number of crimes against animals hasn't stopped. The heinous acts of rapes, that is, bestiality, slaughters of animals, objectifying them as a means for n human needs, uh, like such as uh, meat purposes, scientific research, experiments in cosmetic tests, clothing, shooting, and whatnot. The wildlife of the country seems to have no right to live. The act, the him, the most heinous act of bestiality is increasing right uh, day by day animals are getting raped this crime is increasing uh, in huge numbers nowadays and it seems that not even animals are safe to roam freely on the streets they too get raped section 377 of the indian penal code defines whoever voluntarily has a carnal intercourse against the order of nature with any man women or animal shall be punished with the imprisonment for life or a tenure of 10 uh, 10 years and shall also be held liable for fine Section 377 does not but address the extreme cruelty meted out against the animals, but only but only criminalizes the penetrative sexual intercourse with an animal. Animal rights body uh, urged the government to amend the prevention and cruelty of uh, animal acts in 1960 and to introduce stronger penalties for the cruelty of animals and make bestiality a cognizable offense. Now, let us talk about the animal protection rights in law. So, Article 51A G of uh, Indian Constitution says that it shall be a duty of uh, every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment and having uh, including forests, lakes, rivers, wildlife and to have compassion for living creatures. Whereas uh, section 428 and 429 of uh, IPC says killing, poisoning, rendering useless of any animal is punishable offence and uh, it will uh, lead to imprisonment for up to two years and fine or both. Section 11 of the uh, PCA Act uh, says that uh, if any person allows uh, himself or beats or kicks or tortures in uh, any animal in any way subjecting to cause him uh, unnecessary pain and suffering then they will be held liable uh, to pay a fine section 11 uh, clause b says that anybody who employs any unfit animal or uh, uh, an old animal or a animal with a wound or suffering so infirmity or infirmity or sores or uh, anything uh, and force him to work then they will be held liable Section 11, Clause D says that anybody uh, who carries any animal subjecting to pain and suffering will be held liable. Section 11, Clause E says that uh, if anyone keeps an animal in a cage or any confinement which is not a uh, uh, which is not enough to uh, the animal to move freely then they will be held liable so like, uh, uh, so section 11 uh, clause j says that any owner of any animal who allows the animal uh, to be affected with a contagious or infectious disease and to die in any street then they will be held liable section 11 clause k says that any person who offers for sale uh, an animal that so that is suffering from pain or due to mutilation crowding starvation uh, overcrowding or starvation or ill treatment then they will be held liable section 11 o of pca act says that punishment if any person uh, who either promotes or take part in any shooting competition where animals are released from a uh, captivity for shooting or if he uh, voluntarily practices hunting animals then he will be held liable for unpunishable offense under ipc Laws relating to pets and their punishments are also found under Section 11 of PC Act. Section 503 of IPC says that if any individual is carrying someone else and averting him her to uh, uh, who is a proprietor of a pet, from keeping or dealing his her pet can held be can be held liable uh, at risk. Uh, the Wildlife of Protection Act 1972 includes the provisions for protection of wild animals, birds, aquatic animals and zoo animals. Section 48A uh, of the Act rejects transportation of any wildlife, uh, wild animal, birds uh, aside from uh, the authorization of chief wildlife warden or some authority by the uh, 
by permitted by the state government section 49 of the same act forbids the purchase without license of wild animals from dealers laws related to birds are uh, listed under the wildlife protection act 1972 and the pca act along with the uh, land and aquatic animals now uh, under section 16c of uh, wildlife protection act uh, makes it uh, unlawful to injure or destroy wild uh, wildlife or bird or reptiles etc or damaging their eggs or nest um, or the place where they live uh, or the person who is found doing this or com committing such offense will be held uh, liable for an punishable offense uh, and uh, he will be sent to jail for 7 years and um, may be held liable to pay a fine of rupees 25000 Section 38A of Wildlife Protection Act says uh, accommodates basis of a central zoo authority by which uh, the central zoo government uh, which has accompanying capacities of indicating the base norms of keeping uh, animals inside the zoo, perceived zoos or perceived geopardy species and uh, relegate duties to zoos for the hostage, uh, rearing and so forth. Section 16C of the Wildlife Protection Act states punishments for injuring or destroying world, uh, wild birds, um, any reptiles or uh, other animals uh, or damaging or disturbing their eggs or nest. Animal Protection uh, Dogs Rules 2001 provides rules for relating to pet and street dog. The Breeding and Experiment on Animals Control and Supervision Rules 1998 provides general requirements for breeding and using animals for research. Now let us discuss about the historical importance of the animal rights. According to Hindu scriptures, Hinduism teaches everyone non-violence and towards uh, all living beings. Killing animals contribute to bad karma but at the same time there's no strict, strict laws for sticking to uh, being a uh, um, vegetarian or instead there is a practice to continue the animal sacrifice in religious ceremonies despite of the fact that major religions in india are not allowed to practice killing any animal for any purpose people still continue the practice of animal slaughter in huge numbers now during times of british india post 1860 when the animal experimentation began in india first indian society for the prevention of cruelty to animals act uh, and in 1861 and cruelty to animals act 1876 late 1800s uh, started this um, um, initiative of the cow protection movement arose in northern india initiated by hindus uh, for the uh, for the movement uh, for protection of cows cattle slaughters were opposed and provided sanctuaries for cows now, post-independence of India, cruelty against animals was criminalized with certain exceptions for the treatment of animals used for food purposes and scientific experiments. Now, under India's first national animal welfare law, the Prevention of Cruelty Animals Act 1960, and that led to formation of Animal Welfare Board of India to animal welfare and ensure enforcement of anti-cruelty provisions. Now, certain restrictions were imposed for animal transport, animal experiments, etc. So, this was all about the animal rights uh, and its history. So, thank you.